Okay, so I'm coming back to tell y'all that I didn't take this contract too seriously when I signed it, right? I didn't know they was gonna actually give me a bedside job. I I, I thought I thought this was like a little ha ha, a little hee hee, a little quick little money for me. They put me in the ER. They really did it. I mean, they stood by their word. I'm just flabbergasted, okay? Like, so let's rewind the tape. I get to my destination, right? I'm in my wonderful apartment. I no longer could find a furnished finder. I did get a discount from the front desk, so I'm happy about that. I got my own humble abode. I start my first day of orientation, right? It was just right down the street. I get there, man. Let me let me tell you. It was about, a, I swear, it felt like 100 people in that classroom, right? We do the fit testing, and we watching a whole bunch of videos. We doing our epic training, restraints training, glucometer training. I mean, just a, a laundry list of things that need to be done, right? I'm sitting down trying to get all this stuff done because they're literally giving us one day and then tomorrow we're going to the hospital. Okay, so I'm sitting down going over the videos and stuff like that. Homegirl that I used to work with in Maryland comes walking through the door. Let me tell you, the travel world, small, small. Let me tell you, my homegirl, she walked through that door. I said, no, 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 you from somewhere. Like, Nene, no, 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 you from somewhere. We started screaming in the classroom and everything. <laughs> I was, I was so happy because, like, when you were traveling, sometimes I'll be wanting to have my people with me. You know what I'm saying? I don't have my friend Jari with me, so I was so happy to see her. And I met several other travelers, right? So we did this epic training that was, like, so extensive. Like, it literally took me all day to finish. Like, you could not start without finishing your epic training, right? So this girl, she was helping me out with my epic training. The teachers, they act like they was just rushing us, just rushing us to get stuff done. Like literally I was the last person coming out of that classroom till I finished all my modules. Why I get home, y'all? I get home, I get on TikTok, right? And the girl that was actually helping me with my epic training, she was like, she's a TikToker, right? She has a lot of follower account. And she was like, uh, when the contract, it says something, if your algorithm catches it, it's so funny, it says like, when the company brings in 60 new travelers and they plan to uh, bring in more travelers every Monday. I did not know they were bringing in travel nurses like every Monday, you know what I'm saying? Like it was it was a big class. I was like, dang, you know? And so I was like, looking at her video, I said, she was in the same classroom as me. She showed the whole classroom. I'm like, I'm in the back end right there. It was just so funny. It was so funny how everything lined up together. But I was like, no, 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 you from somewhere? <laughs> And I was like, let's get the money, sis. Let's get the money. It was so funny. And so I finished all my training, right? I get to the hospital, huge, beautiful hospital, right? I meet up with the educator along with other RNs and the LVNs that day. We we finished a few more modules in the morning. And she was like, hey, I'm letting you tell you like the standards is really high. We need a lot of people. We're expanding and stuff like that. And also, I just want to let you know that our hospital was currently under fire for some stuff that happened. I guess a patient died um, and died in another hospital's care and they weren't supposed to be uh, discharged without receiving any medical advice from the doctor. They were documenting, I believe allegedly that he eloped, but I don't know what happened, but they're under fire. The patient just walked out and died at another hospital. So, and plus, where the state I'm in, they don't have adequate staffing either as well. So you literally see this hospital jam packed with nothing but travelers, okay? So I'm walking through, we finish, we talk with each other, get acquainted, we sign all the paperwork. She's like, okay, so after lunch, I'm pairing you up with somebody. Y'all gonna get on the floor. It's about one o'clock. So I was like, so are you saying that we only getting about like five hours of orientation? Uh, like on the fourth physically. She was like, yeah, um, I, I'm only allowed to only give you about four, no more than seven. I was like, is that so? Oh my goodness. Literally, she shows us the locker room. She shows us around the hospital, put my bags down. We start the day. She pairs me up with another LVN. Let me tell you how this works. Let's start from the beginning. We have these sections called Pat 1, Pat 2, Pat three. 
Pat one is when you initially come into the hospital, right? You either drive yourself, walk up, whatever that you're doing and stuff like that. You have the LVNs that's in the front, you have the RN that's in registration, or you just have like the regular medical front desk workers, right? The LVNs is the one in the front that's going to monitor you out in the lobby till we can get you inside to PAT2 or PAT3, right? So PAT1, I'm getting, I'm getting your UA. Um, we're doing incision and drainage. I mean, nothing too extensive, but enough to get you in and get you out. Now, if it's something like pain, vaginal bleeding, I mean, I'm seeing some crazy stuff like ectopic pregnancies, people getting jumped, fights. Uh, what else have I seen so far? Oh, yeah, lower back pain. I mean, it was just so much that I've seen. I don't even know if I can say I've seen peds babies, um, domestic violence. I mean, the list goes on. It was just nothing but chaos, chaos. So, Pat one, again, like I said, LVNs are watching you in the lobby. We're taking your vital signs at three times a day, and then we're just watching you and doing a little small procedures with the doctor, whatever that gets ordered, okay? Now, if you need medication, you go to PAT2, right? So I was there one day, and it's literally, it's not rooms. LVNs don't get rooms. They get sections, like, you know, the little curtain that goes around. You've seen it before. It's in PAT2 or PAT3. So we bring you from the lobby, we get you in, and we're going to start your medication. Or you're going to start you an IV, and we're going to start you some fluids or whatever bags that we need for you. These people come in, I mean, I promise you, I see about 50 million people a day. Crazy. So I'm constantly running back from the med room, back into pad two or pad three. Constantly getting labels, constantly getting specimens. I mean, so much, it's so extensive, okay? And then also you got to keep in fact that most of these people that are yelling, they cussing you out. They're in pain. They trying to slide off from uh, the, their chair and stuff like that. They begging to get a bed. But remind you, we barely have beds. And I'll get to that. I'll get to that, okay? We barely have beds. So I'm also trying to make sure these people don't go crazy and I'm trying to get their meds and, and watch over them, okay? Then you have path three, is which I started orientation on with another LVN. These are people that usually come by ambulance. Some of them do drive. But these are COVID positive patients or they're exemplifying symptoms, okay? So these are the people, whether you from the lobby or you came from an ambulance or whatever, whatever symptoms that you have and you end up having a positive result, they send you to a CA, right? And if you're in C7, that means that we're waiting on your uh, results to get back or whatever issue that we're having with you at this moment, okay? Now remind you, we put them in the insulated rooms where the door is shut and everything like that. The, in, the, in the ED, it's nothing but pure chaos. The first thing when I came into this hospital, I was like, this is unsanitary. I was looking at this like, how, how do nurses who wanna be ER nurses live like this? Like, how do you literally want to, to do this every single day? This. This place is infested with so many people running around, paramedics, EMTs, doctors, nurses. I mean, you got people that's uh, getting you registered. I mean, it's just none but people bumping into you constantly. You barely can get a, a desk, a computer. You always on your feet. I mean, my first day, my feet was burning, okay? Burning. So, C7, C8, they put these people in a room, it looks like they just gutted it the room, right? And put chairs around the room. And they got these people that's just waiting there, just huh, huh, coughing and, and hacking and yelling. And remind you, they get mad because they waiting and waiting because they think this is a five-star hotel. It ain't, it ain't. You got people sitting outside uh, of the rooms in beds around. I remind you, it's about 100 nurses in the ER. 100, baby. I got about 10 of y'all to get to. All right, so C7, C8, we getting bottles again, we get in whatever that we need done with the patient so we can get them in and get them out. Now I did have an emergency situation that happened on my first day with the patient that was exemplifying COVID symptoms, ended up being positive, but he was also passing out. So while we, uh, the other nurse that I was with, she was starting an IV, 
he said that he was like losing his consciousness right now. He didn't feel good and he was about to just faint, but he couldn't have water because he had to get a CT uh, ultrasound. He had a, a laundry list of stuff that had to do on the orders. So he was about to pass out and we had to put ice packs on his front chest and the back of his chest. And immediately he got admitted right then and there. He became an urgent uh, patient at that point. So usually they have a ranking system from one through four, one being the highest on the list of urgent who they need to get to, just like what you learn in nursing school and four less urgent, okay? But remind you, these people wait so long and <laughs> Y'all waiting for something as, as far as like Tylenol, okay? I mean, I gave some like fentanyl, some Toradol and stuff like that, but most of the time these patients is just getting drugs that you could have got at the local uh, store around the block or your urgent care. And I'm like, I know they bill high. I just know they bill high. You know what, but I'm, I'm gonna get it done and re remind you, we see all these patients and we do this over and over again. And I'm just like, Oh, this this is just too much. I was trying to really decide. I said, maybe having five patients on a regular floor ain't that bad. Maybe it ain't that bad. It, it can't be. It can't be that bad. You know, but then I got used to it. And although I only had about like five, six hours of training, I grasped real fast. And I mean fast. And it's been making my days uh, go faster. Um, I'm actually learning something new every single day. So if you don't think LVNs don't get utilized in the ER, they do, absolutely. It's about a hundred of us there day and night. And it's just chaotic, it's chaotic. So first, my first impression of the ER, I was honestly disgusting. But like I said, this has been one hectic week. One hectic week and I'm glad that I'm still cleansing the only thing that I have resorted back to is caffeine in an energy drink. Because after three o'clock and running back and forth through lab, meds, getting cussed out by these people, people get mad at you, doctors, other nurses get mad at you throughout the day. I'm gonna need some type of crack after I finish with this. It's gonna be either that. It's gonna be drugs, or it's gonna be some caffeine, something. So that's the only thing that I've resorted back to. <laughs> But so far, so good. So after I come back home, right? I've only been three days on the unit. I sit down, lay down, I look up through my email. After all the crazy mess that I have seen, and I've, I've seen some stuff, and you gonna see some stuff in the ER. I thought I've seen it all, but I have not seen it all. I see an extension contract. And I was like, oof, I don't know about that. But this money? It's gonna make me rethink some stuff. I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. But 2020, I gotta get to the bag, y'all. Thank y'all so much for watching. I got so much stuff to talk. Did we, did we, did we talk about uh, how the CDC talking about that even if you COVID positive, they want your ass back at work after five days or barely even that, they don't care. Oh yeah, them people don't care about you. They don't care about you. Listen, I got I got a plan. I just I just need a platform. I had a real plan. I'm, I'm on my way out of nursing real soon. I, I can't do this stuff that y'all doing. Y'all committed. Salute to y'all. But I, your girl can't do this for too long. 2022. I'm about to rack up a bag and I'm out of here. CDC can kiss my black ass. They can kiss my black ass. I, I don't have, I don't hear nothing what the CDC got to say. Like I said, I'm responsible for my own health at the end of the day. And if your ass gets sent to that board, remind you, they ain't gonna be blaming no CDC or nothing like that. They're gonna be looking at you because you knew not to take your ass back to work, knowing you was out there hacking and coughing and still showing a fever, aches, bodies, chill, all of that stuff. They ain't gonna be looking at the CDC. They gonna always blame who? The nurse. Okay, I rest my case. Bye-bye. <laughs>